So here is your classic criteria B for grade 6 in mathematics. It's related to linear sequences. Um, all grade 6 and grade 7, maybe even grade 8, will be um, given a linear pattern to spot at some point in their criteria B. Now, what you'll see here in MYP is the assessment criteria for investigating patterns for grade 6. Now, for grade 7 and 8, they have to justify their general rule using some complex mathematics or another method. Um, but in this case, for grade 6, all they have to do is you will see in part D, you have applied problem solving to recognize patterns. You have suggested relationships or rules consistent with findings. You have verified whether your patterns work for another example. So basically what that means in terms of a student is they have understood the problem. They have generated a table or a graph related to the problem. They're able to, to picture a pattern related to the numbers or the graph or whatever the problem is and they're able to come up with a general rule which is either in worded form uh, but not basic or algebra form is the best form of a general rule. And from that general rule you will then verify using a verify table which you'll see um, later on, um, to back up your general rule and to prove that it works for other examples. Um, for grade seven and eight, as I said, they have to do a justify. Um, I talk about that in another uh, criteria B example. So this is for grade six. So problem arises. Jeremy is a garden, he plants to plant a lot of flower beds in his garden, he must plant the flower beds uh, like so. So you can see it's a simple pattern, you've got one black flower bed and then you've got white squares round about it. So feel free to pause the video and work it out before I go to the next page. So basically, level one to two, for criteria B is just draw pattern four. So that's very common. You've got three patterns. Now can the student um, investigate what the fourth pattern would be? So the majority of students would be able to do that. Question two, what do you predict will happen to the number of slabs, which are the white squares, as the number of flower beds and screens? So for grade six, we're just looking for a simple sentence. Now, in this student's example, on the top of the squares, it is increase two, so two times. So this student hasn't quite grasped what um, is happening as one um, flower bed is increased. The white squares actually increase by five. Um, so I don't know what this student was actually thinking about because it's quite a basic thing. So we would expect 90% at least of our students to be able to answer the first two questions. Now, if you're watching this video or you're a parent, uh, you might want to get your uh, son or daughter to practice these in, in simple patterns, drawing them and writing down a sentence of what they think is going to happen next. Right, part three is, is being able to take your, your picture diagram and put it into a table form. In this case, the table's half done for you. You just need to fill in the remaining. So this student, although they couldn't explain what was happening in the pattern, they were able to fill out the table correctly. Now, uh, they, they've clearly got it going up in fives, which is great, but why couldn't they see it? I don't know why. So statement above does not match table. So I, that's my handwriting um, I've explained to the student. And then I've said, use linear patterns, i.e. a straight line or sequence to generate the rule. So this is where it goes on to the level uh, 
5 to 6 for a grade 6, can they now from this table come up with an equation which allows them to predict for maybe 30 flower beds or 150 flower beds and so on. Um, the common thing that a student who isn't able to come up with the general rule, they will just say the pattern goes up by 5. Now that's not what we're looking for in grade 6 because if you say it goes up by 5, what if I ask you for the 150th flower bed? You're not going to sit and add 5 all the way up to 150. So it just doesn't work like that. Um, or some students might just um, do uh, some weird multiplication that they think that four flower beds <clears throat> is 23 and five flower beds is 28. Well, five goes into 150, 30 times, so they do 28 times 30. Now it gets kind of close, but it's not going to create a general rule, so they're not showing any investigating patterns. So over the page, it says to get your uh, 3 to 4 and 5 to 6 part, it says using problem solving methods, find patterns that will help Jeremy, Jeremy calculate the number of many slabs, use words or algebra and algebra to describe any patterns. Now, this student did the classic. If he wants 6 flower beds, he should calculate how many slabs there will be in 1, that is 8. So if they want 6, then he should go from 8. So this student's when the classic add five, add five, add five, add five, because um, they weren't able to come up with the general rule. Now, I know that this student has been taught linear sequences and um, it shouldn't have been a problem. So I've said, student unable to create rule which allows prediction without adding five each time. Um, answer, that is what we're looking for. So using the table, number of white slabs equals five because that's how much it goes up with times the number of flower beds and add three now if we refer back to this you can see that five times flower beds one is five add three is eight five times two is ten add three makes thirteen five times three is fifteen add three makes eighteen 5 times 4 is 20, add 3 makes 23. So that's the sort of analysis and um, pattern spotting using algebra we're looking for the student to do. Um, to get the plus 3, another method is, well, the flower beds is 1, it's 8. If you actually go back in time and say when there's 0 flower beds, how many white slabs are there? Well, when there's 0 flower beds, there would be only 3. And that's where your general rule has the add three parts to it as well. So, I've got my general rule. What do I do next? Well, I want to show the teacher that I can verify this. Now, in this school, we teach the students how to do a verify table, which allows them to get the level five, six, seven, eight. And generally, if they can um, get two verify tables, if you look at the actual criteria, it says you have verified whether your pattern works for other examples. For a level five to six, you have verified whether your patterns work for another example. So five to six means you can only do it for one verify table. Seven to eight means you can do it successfully for more than one. So this student, Prediction. I My prediction for pattern 7 is that it's going to be 38. Well, all they've done is add 5, add 5, add 5, add 5. So they haven't actually used the general rule. So my answer, the correct answer should have been... Um, I predict, using my general rule, that 5 times 7, because it's for pattern number 7, plus 3 equals 35 plus 3, which equals 38. So using my general rule, I was able to make a prediction. Now, you cannot do your actual until you've made your prediction. That's the whole point of verifying, and we really stress this in this school. If the student goes backwards and does the actual first, and then manipulates the prediction, then they're, they're technically cheating. So we don't give them credit for that. 
So you should really be using your general rule, make your prediction, and then how do you do the actual well? In this case, each criteria B is designed so that the student has an actual way of getting the answer. So here you can see that the actual is another method of finding the actual answer. So it's not using an equation that you've made up, it's using a solid concrete method to get the answer. Now in this it's very simple, it's grade 6, all they have to do is draw out uh, 7 flower beds. So you can see I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 flower beds and if I count all the white squares it counts up to 38. So therefore I have verified. And then all you need to do is a little comment at the end. Um, my prediction matches my actual. Therefore, my formula seems to be working because I've only done it for one case. I've not done it for lots of cases. Again, verify your pattern for eight. So I would repeat the same process. I would use my formula. I would get five times eight is 40. 40 plus three is 43. This student, again, has just added up fives, um, and it's not what we're looking for. The actual draw eight flower beds, count all your white squares, and you're going to get the answer. Now, <clears throat> third one and final one for nine, and this you would just repeat the process three times to show that you're fast at your work, you're able to verify more than once, and it gets you the answer. So, a little advanced question, how many slabs would there be for 40 flower beds? So this is to, to trick the students, for, for this student in particular, they didn't get it right because they somehow did 40 times 8, which is 320, so they were unable to count up 5 40 times for starting at 8 because it takes them too long and it's easy to make mistakes. So they didn't use the general rule. So if you can see here, the general rule is white slabs is equal to five times the flower beds plus three. So all they had to do was five times 40 plus three. So it should have been 203. So grade six, that would have got you an eight if you had done it the way I have in the red writing. Get your general rule, verify it for more than one example, and voila. Now, if you're in grade 7 or 8, you would have to justify this general rule. And what we do in mathematics to justify is to show another mathematical proof of finding the same general rule. So when I found my general rule uh, at the beginning, I used linear sequences, arithmetic sequences, or I just spotted that 5 times 1 was 5, plus 3 made 8, 5 times 2 was 10, plus 3 made 13, so I knew it was 5 times f plus 3. But here is a, a justification of the general rule. You can actually use straight line. So using my table, I was able to plot points and make a graph. I found my gradient which was rise over run, which is five. So that correlates to M, which also correlates to my equation. And my y-intercept was three. So therefore I end up with the same equation. Y equals five X plus three uh, is the same as white slabs equals five times the flower beds plus three. So the rule is justified. Please feel free to leave comments, ask questions, um, and I will upload a grade 7, 8, 9 and 10 criteria B so you can see the complexity levels.